Hi folks. Welcome to episode 11 of Ask Evelyn. I am getting myself set up here. We're really glad that you guys could join us. And I'm about to add in my lovely co host. It is a pretty nice day over here. I hope that you guys are having a similar kind of day. Hi, Pat. Hey, how's it going? It's going good. I have to do a new kind of setup here because I'm outside. I'm going to give yeah. this one more shot. We'll see if we'll see if this works. Last time it was, it was a little rough, but you guys stuck with us, which was great. I'm so uh, really good to see you. And I was just welcoming all of our viewers to episode 11 of Ask Evelyn. And uh, we've got a really fun show for you guys today. So thank you guys all for joining us. Um, I'm like, hold on one second. I got some logistics going here. So uh, to introduce myself, I'm Becca Fong, and I am the Residential Outreach Planner for Solid Waste for Seattle Public Utilities, and my awesome co-host is... Awesome co-host to Becca. I am Pat Kaufman, also Pat Recycles on Twitter. Um, I am the Commercial Recycling and Composting Program Coordinator for Seattle Public Utilities, you know, working with businesses, helping businesses recycle and compost more stuff. So yeah, <laughs> great to be here. All right, so we've got a great show for you guys this week, and this is a quick reminder that this show is run on your questions, so we are always here to talk trash and compost and recycling with you guys every week, but please, if you have questions, send them to us. You can put them in the comments, and we'll try to get to you. Uh, if we don't get to you during this uh, episode, we will get we will get back to you shortly, certainly. Mm -hmm. um, you can also send us your questions through direct message through Seattle Public Utilities Facebook or Twitter. That would be great. Or you can go old school, which is how Ask Evelyn started. And you can, well, actually, Ask Evelyn started with the mail. But you right. can send us an email at askevelyn at seattle.gov. You know, so. I got a question about that from, from a friend. They said, well, what is Evelyn all about? Where did Evelyn come from? <laughs> Every once in a while, I think we should repeat. So Evelyn was Evelyn the Envelope, one of the recyclaps. And we had, yep, you, that your uh, starter panel there it gives, it, gives a visual. Look at that. <laughs> PRT uh, computer <laughs> screen on there. Um, we had Corey, the apple core, Betty, the bottle. So Evelyn was the envelope. She was the one who, who was the uh, representative of the mixed paper stream. Sure. And you would type in, you would, you know, write her, you could write her a letter or you could send her an email and ask her a question. And, you know, she'd get back to you wearing her jaunty hat and her awesome, fantastic red gloves. <laughs> so <laughs> we get to be the embodiment of Evelyn now, which is pretty fantastic. I'm pretty excited to be the question answering envelope. <laughs> so we've got two really great questions for you today, and then we'll follow up with our weekly waste challenge at the end of the episode, and then introduce our weekly waste challenge for that week to come. So we've got two questions today. Our first question is about what to do with your COVID PPE, which definitely is something that's top of mind a lot lately. And then we have another question about styrofoam. So Pat, do you want to kick us off? Sure. Question number one. Dear Evelyn, I have seen a number of articles about COVID-related trash being um, the latest addition to plastic pollution in the ocean. There are reports of disposable gloves, masks, and plastic hand sanitizer bottles being seen on the beaches of France and in the South Pacific. I know those places are far away, but I'm wondering if masks and gloves I dispose of here could ever end up being part of that problem. Thanks, Stanley. Good question, Stanley. Thanks for the, thanks for the question. Uh, it gives us a chance to talk about this very timely waste stream item. Um, bottom line, none of the Seattle garbage is garbage. Going into our system of garbage collection is ever going to end up on a shore or a, you know, uh, definitely not in these far-flung places. But um, the key is to bag your waste, to put it in your waste bin uh, at your home, whether you're a multifamily, single family, or wherever you live, to make sure you put your stuff in a bag and put it in the trash. And when that material is collected by the truck, then the truck is taken to the transfer station, and it's loaded into a larger container, an intermodal container, that then goes to the rail yard. And then that train takes the, the trash all the way down to Central Oregon, where the landfill exists for Seattle Public Utilities contracted disposal partner waste management. Um, that's 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 how tight it is. It's literally once it's in your can in a bag, there's very little opportunity for you know uh, things to fall out of the system. Um, I think most of what we're seeing, don't you think, Becca, is just like people littering, unfortunately. 
Unfortunately, I think, you know, it's one of those things that litter happens for all kinds of reasons, right? So sometimes stuff can just like fall out of your pocket. That happens sometimes. Some people do, unfortunately, just throw things on the ground. Um, we did have somebody tell us that they had, you know, seen crows at their apartment picking masks mm. out of the dumpster going in there and like, I don't know, waving them around like flags because crows are cheeky like that. Oh, people um, say crows are super smart, but I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I think, you know, I mean, they're kind of fun. Yeah. Um, but I think that, you know, I think most of it, if you are bagging your trash, if you're putting your PP into a bag, tying it off and putting it into either the dumpster or your cart at home, I think you're in a, you're in pretty good shape. Unfortunately, litter does happen, you know, mm -hmm. and I think that all of us just need to be really diligent. And I think that, you know, we are definitely seeing more PPE, gloves, masks, that kind of stuff just on our streets. And I think because people are just using it more that you're seeing it. Um, I think it's kind of a good opportunity. We all are pretty aware that those are things that we keep with us when we go out. So keeping track of the stuff that you've decided to use and disposing of it at the end of the day is probably a really good way to go. But Pat, you were going to no, say something. I'm sorry. I was. No, I just think probably probably would have been a good time to punch up the CDC recommendations for reusable PPP, PPE, um, you know, procedures. Uh, what, what I would recommend, I mean, I'm not the CDC expert here, but basically, I mean, some of those masks are perfectly good. I use them to go grocery shopping. I come home, you know, hang it on a hook, leave it alone for a few days if you have multiple masks you're using. Or if it's one of the cloth ones that everybody's making in these maker groups, which is great, um, just run it through the wash, obviously, because they're fully reusable. So do the things you need to do, you know, with common sense to right. reuse your masks as, as much as you can before they're so soiled or used or the, the last six broken or whatever the deal is that, that you're done and you have to dispose of it. Then you bag it and trash it. Totally. I think that's a really good point. I think that, you know, again, too, it's we always are promoting reusable things because that's less of an impact on the environment than disposable. But do what you got to do, people. I mean, like folks who don't feel comfortable using reusable, please, if you choose re to use disposable things, make sure that they're bagged in your trash, like all of your trash. Right. So I think that that's that's the main thing to remember is just remember to kind of keep it all bagged up. So yep. sounds good. All right. Well, that was a good question from Stanley. I think we've oh, definitely yeah. been seeing a lot more of that, which is definitely unfortunate, mm -hmm. um, but a fact of the current life that we've got. So our second question comes to, comes to us from Faye and says, Dear Evelyn, I have a bunch of styrofoam stockpiled and it needs to go. It's a random pile of different types of foam. I have packaging from a printer and a microwave. I've got two bags of those foam packing peanuts and I've got a bag full of foam sheeting. What are my options? And thanks, Faye. That's a really good question. Yes, I think that there is a lot of that stuff, again, that we're finding, you know, that you've got in your garage. People are still doing spring cleaning. A lot of you folks have um, kind of withheld going to, like, our transfer stations, which is great. Uh, but foam, we've got a lot of really good options, which is awesome. And, Pat, you and I have talked about this. Foam is one of those things that is not accepted in the curbside cart for recycling. But right. there are recycling options, kind of what we like to refer to as beyond the cart. And for the foam block, Faye, that you've got, I think one really good option is something called the special item pickup. So if you go to seattle.gov slash special items, you can see that you can have foam picked up at your house for free and we will recycle it, which is great. Part of that service, we will only take foam block. Unfortunately, we can't take, let's see, she's mm -hmm. also got um, packing yeah. peanuts and then some foam sheeting, but we'll talk about that in a second. But for the foam block, that's that's really a pretty pretty great thing. I definitely use that at my house. You need to make sure when you go to special items, there's all kinds of instructions about how you schedule that delivery and pickup. Yeah. And, good point. Um, it has to be scheduled, right? You can't yes. just put the block out at the curb. The driver, the, the company has to know that this is being set out for collection. Otherwise, you might get charged an over on your garbage because they might see it as a extra garbage bag next to the container. So you really have to do the pre-planning and click on uh, request the collection of foam. Absolutely. And I think one thing that has been kind of tough, I mean, as a user of the service, is that when you read the instructions, it asks for it to be put in a clear plastic bag, mm -hmm. which is sometimes kind of hard to come by. Yeah. Um, those aren't things that are generally residentially available. 
Um, so f try to find one if you can, a clear plastic bag to put it in. Sometimes if you've ordered like a microwave, like it comes in a big pl clear plastic bag anyway, because, right. you know, why not? Let's have some more packaging. Mm -hmm. So you can reuse that big plastic bag to put it in there. And then that way the driver knows that that's what's inside. It's not full of trash. It's just full of foam block. One thing that I've done as well is I have used like a translucent, like I have those um, white kitchen bags. So you can mm -hmm. kind of see through them. Yeah, and I'll write and foam on the front, and action. and it's yeah, and it's pretty obvious that it's foam. So, mm -hmm. um, you definitely want to make sure to schedule your foam pickup for foam block, and then make sure that it's really clearly mm -hmm. identifiable as that. Um, Pat, you had mentioned something that a lot of kind of these other foam items too. We don't take those for the special item pickup, but there are some other options for them. Yeah, I was just making a note because that's a good point about the white bags. We could probably add that to the website just as yeah. A helping suggestion. Um, there's a lot of foam. And the other thing I want to mention is, you know, foam, as we've described it, is EPS, expanded polystyrene. And PS is number six in the numbered plastics, you know, game. Um, so, you know, we don't go by the numbers. We don't, we don't recycle by the numbers in Seattle. We want rigid plastic containers in the recycle bin, no foam in the recycle bin. So, but that's what throws people sometimes. They see this recycle symbol, number six, and EPS on their phone. They, oh, recycle symbol, it can go in the recycle cart. No, it cannot. So that's one clarifying point there about that. Good point. Um, there's different types of foam. You know, there's different companies, industries that use foam. There are foam food packaging containers. There's, you know, cup of soup, cup of noodles. Those are kind of, those are like the typical foam. There's also like the ramen bowls and things now. That right. Are then you've got foam on the other end of the spectrum, the, the plastic peanuts, like you mentioned, or they'll glue little squares of foam onto cardboard when you get a oh, yeah. product sometimes, a toy or a, electronics or something. So there's, and it's not all EPS. There's different types of foam out there. But so our program, our collection program at Curbside is block foam. So okay. yeah, we can't have the peanuts and we can't have food packaging. The reason why we can't have food packaging, it's not that it's a different, necessarily a different, um, you know, polymer or plastic it's just that it's not usually clean enough right. and it can have labeling on it it can have plastic around the rim of the top it'll have like a foil stuck to it or it's just it's it's single use foam right we're not really in the in the business of collecting that right now because we haven't had we haven't seen had success in collecting it clean enough for for our vendor the vendor who takes right. it so they take all this foam in we also want to talk about what happens with the next and so um, all the foam that comes in, all the foam block that comes in, it goes to a company called Styro Recycle. Is it Styro Cycle? Mm -hmm. Styro Cycle. Styro Cycle. They're down in south, south of Seattle, down near Ikea. A little story about that. The woman who owns the company, she actually worked for Ikea years ago. Oh, got tired of seeing all this foam packaging going. And so she created, uh, with the Ikea management's approval, she created a on-site foam collection effort and wow. was so successful that it took on a whole life of its own and she eventually left employment with ikea and became the foam recycling person for the whole area and cool. i partnered with her for a long time and they funneled all their foam to her and so anyway it's a great it's a great operation and it's working with a lot of different industries and commercial establishments around the region to collect foam block and they take all the foam block and they feed it into this big machine this vat like machine and it sort of heats it up and shrinks it down and removes the, the air out of the foam. So they create this heavy block. Um, I mean, it's like a loaf of bread sized block of pure polystyrene plastic. That's crazy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. Just reconstitute it later at a different facility. It's, it's just, they shrink it for shipping, basically. It's heavy. Sure. But then they, you know, instead of like shipping foam across the country, you, right. you create the, the block of polystyrene and then they can reconstitute that into uh, polystyrene pellets and then the pellets can go into extruder, extruder machines and then make more foam product basically. That's so cool. I love that you can take this big giant thing and shrink it down to something really small. Yeah. yeah. So I think we want, um, I guess in summary, so Faye for your foam block, definitely check us out on special item pickup and we will pick that up curbside for free. Make sure you have it in a clear bag, if not a white bag that says foam on it. For your packing peanuts, um, you can take those back to like UPS stores. Um, I've definitely seen them on my buy nothing group for people who are moving. Those are something that they, UPS stores or FedEx stores, a lot of them will take them back for free, which is fantastic. The plastic foam sheeting 
try to give it away to somebody else. If not, with all of these options, if you don't want to take it somewhere, um, you are welcome to put it in the garbage. That is another option. So you, you do have a lot of choices, Faye. So it's kind of up to you what you like to do. Oh, one more. I almost forgot. Seattle Lighting is a retailer oh, that no. has stores all over Seattle. And they also have a warehouse <clears throat> in Soto, Soto. And they are willing to take back your foam packaging, the foam block. So you can go on our website for the Where Does It Go tool and look that up. And there's a link directly to Seattle Lighting, which is fantastic. They're a great partner with us. So that was pretty fun. Yeah. Um, all right. So now we're at the part in our show where we talk about the weekly right. waste challenge. And last week, we were talking about alternatives to pesticides and chemicals. So, Pat, I'm going to have you go first because I'm going to take folks on a little show and tell, but I got to kind of move oh, some yeah. stuff around. So right. why don't you tell us what you, guys, right what you okay. guys are doing at your house? So one of the things, my wife is a gardener, and so she uh, endeavors to do her gardening work. She doesn't use pesticides or herbicides. And one of the, you know, how-to things you can, you can look up online, you can find options for how to address uh, certain uh, pest plants. And we have a, a lightly used pathway on the one side of our house. And that path gets covered in, in moss and it gets pretty slippery and mucky. So on a warm day, like we're going to have in the next couple of days here, she took a combination. And I don't remember the ratio, you guys. I should have asked her. I think it's like a one to three ratio of vinegar and water. And you just spray bottle that out on the moss. And with the sun's help and the vinegar kind of going into the plant, it turns yellow and dies. And That's so cool. Just to scrape off, brush off with a with a rake. You just run a you know a leaf rake over it and it kind of serrates it, and then you can put a push broom across it, and you just it, it's gone. So it's it's a great way without using any chemicals. That's great. I mean, like I've got a whole bunch of vinegar at my house, so that would be a really really good option. So cool. I mean, it's kind of fun to think about alternatives to pesticides because you're always looking for the least toxic option, right? right? You talked about kind of scraping and using a broom and. I think that that's a really great way to think about like physically, how can you change the environment? And then if you are going to use some kind of substance like vinegar, like you guys use, it's got a very low toxicity. It's, you know, pretty much inert. It gets diluted. It often volatilizes in the sun, mm -hmm. which is what you're really after. So right. Right. Um, I took you guys out here to the garden because I have a horrendous time with slugs. Oh, yes. Oh my goodness, like who knew there were so many slugs in the world, but every year we go through this. So I'm gonna flip my camera around and show you guys a couple of things. Um, right. Let's have a look, what do you got? All oh, right, so, got my garden, so my garden is, you know, it's looking a little slim. We put it in a little bit late, but you got a couple of things here. So we've got all kinds of slugs and let me tell you, those babies are tenacious. So what you've got here is we've got just some um, eggshells just because, you know, we're going a little old school to just physically create something that is unpleasant that they don't want to go over, right? So that's one thing that we do. The other thing we do is we have these kind of rows. So the, the crops are a little bit higher. So we can kind of like keep things clear in here to prevent them from hiding underneath things. I think the other thing that we do is you can kind of see that we kind of keep it well weeded, mm -hmm. right? And you can see on the edges, we have kind of a hard edge and we keep the grass pretty low. And what that does is it prevents the slugs from having a lot of hiding places. Mm -hmm. So when it gets hot, they don't like to be in the hot sun. They kind of have to travel to something that's a little bit shadier. Right. And what that does is it just makes it a lot further for them to, to travel, to come and eat my food. Yeah. So, <laughs> Cause let me tell you, there's nothing sadder than stuff coming up to just see it completely like denuded to the ground being completely eaten by slugs. Yeah. There is uh, one more thing we do use, speaking of the least toxic chemicals, you know, we've done, we've kind of tried to eliminate places for them to hide. We've tried to put down things that are unpleasant for them to crawl over. We also do use a little bit of iron phosphate, also known as sluggo. It's a fairly inert chemical. It is still a registered pesticide. It is very low toxicity, but we do use some of that. And I feel like the combination of all of those factors has been pretty successful. Um, the other really fun one that my kids do in the morning is they do slug patrol. So they literally come out and, uh, they have sticks and they, their whole job is to go along through the garden and fling them over the fence. So nice. that's pretty fun too. Little we slug do it in effort there. <laughs> exactly. So I've seen in my neighborhood on walks that folks with raised beds in the parking strip or in the front yard, they put strips of copper around the top yes. edge of the raised bed. That works as well. 
It does. It works really well. Um, my garden's a little bit too big and it's not oh, yeah. raised. So it's copper's not great, but definitely when I've worked, um, when I've had gardens in smaller spaces, especially in urban environments, because there's lots of places for slugs to hide underneath yeah. things, that, uh, that little strip of copper, there's something about it that they just, they do not like. So that works pretty well. Oh, cool. the other one, I don't know if it's still out here, but the other one we do um, as well is slug traps. And usually we will have, at the end of the day, when I'm drinking a beer, I'll leave a little bit in the bottom. And then I'll leave that to kind of where the slugs will enter the garden, kind of where the leafy material is. And generally they, they crawl in and then, you know, it's full of slugs. So that's a good attractant. It's a really good slug bait, which is, you know, something I have on hand anyway. So that's I'm another option. I'm going to check your memory right now, Becca. A little memory check here. Folks could contact the garden hotline, right? Yes, absolutely. What, phone number. So, oh, man. Ah. I, I, you can't do that to me. My, uh, my memory of phone number, it's 6338-something. But numbers are my weak point, Pat. Sorry um, about that. But you can definitely, you can call the Garden Hotline. The folks are there to pick up the phone. But you can also look at thegardenhotline.org. And there's tons of resources there. And they are, you can send them an email as well. They're happy to answer all of your questions about pesticide alternatives. So right. they are a great partner with us as well. Totally. Um. Well, I'm really excited that my uh, my feed held up to take us to the Look garden. Look at you. are a great distance <laughs> from the uh, antenna there. Good job. I know, right? Um, so to introduce next week's waste weekly waste challenge, right? Um, we talked about trying to figure out how to make the most out of your food. And we've talked about this a little bit before, but we've talked about something that's kind of cool from one of our programs, Love Food, Stop Waste, and that's the Eat First box. Right. So if you want to find resources for that, you can definitely look on our website uh, for Love Food, Stop Waste. But the Eat First box, I think we're, we both do it a little bit, but we're going to really do a big push this week. Right. And what an Eat First box is, is you have literally a box that says Eat First in the front of your refrigerator. So the food that you need to eat um, sooner than other things. So leftovers, things that are maybe, you know, you've had in your fridge for a while, you put those front and center as a reminder of, hey, I should be eating that. So. Right. It works. It's, it's a good, it's a good uh, tool for organizing your refrigerator, you know, contents. Um, you could do it also, you know, on the counter with your, your uh, have a, a fruit bowl out for the things to just grab and snack off of, or just make sure any like little partial box crackers are, uh, totally. are out and available for the quick grab, you know? Yes. It's a good trick for I don't for those of you who are watching who have small children who seem to be hungry every five minutes and like constantly want something to eat. I'm gonna try that trick, like little bits of crackers on the counter that they can self serve, and I don't have to. No, eat them for them. the small <laughs> children and then the very large children. <laughs> they're the same thing. It's like he's constantly eating. So yes, of course. It, exactly, the constant request for snacks and the constant need to do dishes may be <laughs> what finally does me in, but. All right. Thank you guys right. for tuning in. This was another really great episode. Pat, thank you for joining me. Super fun as always. It's great to see you out in the great outdoors. Yeah. And uh, so if you guys have any questions, definitely send them our way. You can send them through direct message through Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. You can send them to askevelyn at seattle.gov. And we will hopefully answer them in a future episode, which would be great. Definitely send them. And a reminder to all of you guys who are watching, invite two people to come and watch us next week. And we will be here Wednesday at 1130 on Instagram TV to talk to you guys about more awesome stuff about recycling, yep. compost, and trash. So I'm Becca Fong. And remember, life's better with less stuff. And I'm Pat Kopp. And remember, remember to recycle right. All right. Take care, you guys. Have a great week. Thanks. Bye. Bye.